Yeah, pour the soup in. Pour some of the soup in. Pour some of the soup in. Pour some of it in. As international students from China move to America for college, the image that often follows is of Balenciagas, Maseratis, and extravagant hot pot dinners. While this is only true for some, others are gritting it out just like any other small business owner. They're opening restaurants and food concepts in the most competitive market in the world, New York City. So let's check out nine new spots that were opened by international students who decided to stick around. And we are in a seldom explored village, at least by us, the West Village. We are outside of Crop Circle. This spot just opened up and it is serving a Chinese street food that I have never seen been served in America before. Let's go check it out. Hey. Hello, hey, 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 hey Manny. Manny, nice to meet you. Hey, what's what up? up? Sindu Gokui is a, is a product that has a long, long history, but it actually got popular in the past, I'll say it's a, the reason five years. And we are looking at a crop circle original. Even in China, they're more like about the crawfish flavors uh -huh. because they love like mala zhao. But this is a shrimp flavor, more keeping in line with you know the traditions in America, the Northeast. Really excited, guys! A shrimp guo kui. Shrimp. So it's kind of like a shrimp paste that they put inside. Almost oh, like this is the Cantonese influence. I can tell. Wow. Wow. That's actually really good. You know what I like most about it is that it's super easy to eat, it's super easy to carry. There is not a lot of meat, but I don't think there needs to be because there's a lot of flavor. Spicy, Spicy beef. Mmm, got a little malak here. You know why this is gonna work in New York? This outer layer, this crust, does remind me of a thin pizza crust. This is kind of like a pizza crust. That's the best way I can describe it. It is, it's similar. Wait, I have the chicken guo kui. I got the pork guo kui. Man, that's good. I like it better than pizza, to be honest. I said it. The mm. pork one's really good. Oh. Okay, yo, Andrew, they got everything here at Crop Circle. Man, they are serving all the most popular foods. I'm gonna try some of this beet salad, though. Uh, shrimp churn bun with an egg good. in it. Oh. Last but not least, I gotta try the um, their version of the red bean. This one was actually done really well. I don't normally like this. Maybe I've just only been exposed to the whack red bean dishes. No, everything was really good here at Crop Circle. Man, I am just glad to see street foods that I discovered in China make it to the US. It's good, man. Everything was good. You got a winner, Manny. Shout out to you. Now let's keep it moving. I'm excited to see what else we find. Yo, Andrew, we came all the way to Bryant Park. We're on 41st Street, Midtown, Andrew. We're almost never up here. We had to come to Junza, which is a homestyle Chinese kitchen. Junza refers to somebody with great integrity, and that's what they're trying to do with this restaurant. They're trying to deliver high quality ingredients with like very Northeastern flavors. Man, we gotta see what they got. Let's check it out. All right, so immediately, I think you'll notice Junza is really modern on the inside. I know that a lot of the design work here is, Andrew, is actually done in Beijing. Is that the pepper pepper beef in the middle? Yes. Oh, definitely got to try that. Do you recommend uh, adding anything to any of them? I would say uh, the Miller Crisp and the shallots. I think those are really kicking. All right. This is kind of like sweet greening eyes, Northeastern Chinese food. Uh, you can check out this. They sell their own chili oil here. So this is a mixture between the lion's head meatball and uh, tomato egg noodles. So tomato egg noodles are sort of like a pan Chinese dish all around the country. The lion head thing tends to be more of a Jiangsu, Zhejiang type thing. Guys, I have this pepper beef. It looks like it has so much flavor, man. Let's go. Oh, this is saucy, very beefy, got a little jalapeno kick. I would say almost, it started to taste a little bit like Mexican. I see the tomatoes, I see the eggs. Not like it tastes a little different. Overall, I like it. I would say I like this dish, but it doesn't really taste like Zhejiang man as much as it does kind of like a Mexican fusion of Zhejiang man. It's still tasty. Sort of in the way sweet greens doesn't taste like any salad you've ever had. I wouldn't say that fully tastes like any tomato egg noodle I've ever had, but I like it. All right, you guys, our final two dishes is the firecracker chicken, and then that is a chilled Chinese chicken noodle, you know, very popular in Taiwan and other parts like that, but with more yuzu Japanese influence. Mm. I would say overall, the food looks really good though. Very colorful, looks healthy, nicely put together. To be honest, this is actually really good lunch food. It feels healthy, it's not too heavy. When you're even thinking about a lot of like sesame sauce in, in Chinese noodles, it can get really, really thick and rich, but it's very refreshing. So overall, I feel good about eating Junzi. A lot of flavor in this food. For me, as much as I like tomato and Andrew, 
my favorite dish today was the long mian with yuzu. I had never seen anybody take Chinese chicken long mian and mix it with Japanese influence from the yuzu sauce. This firecracker chicken is my favorite. The chicken's tender, has a little bit of sweetness to it. I love the cabbage that's on the side. Overall, this is my winner. All right, next up on our Chinese international student-owned restaurant crawl is Silky Kitchen. What they really wanted to do was they wanted to serve Hunan-inspired dishes in a fast, casual manner. This is something that's not you know, seen very often because Hunan restaurants can get pretty expensive, but here they're trying to deliver it to the masses and particularly the students at NYU right here. Silky Kitchen, let's, let's go. go. You guys are doing it authentic. We are doing it authentic. If you take a flight, go to Hunan right now, you will eat exactly the same stuff. Do you think it would be possible if he could film some of the cooking? Okay, yeah, sure. We are here at Silky Kitchen taking a look at fast casual Hunan. You got a stir fried egg and hot pepper dish with uh, added pickled greens. I'm actually the most excited to try this. Oh my goodness. Yo, Anna, pour the soup in. Pour some of the soup in. Pour some of the soup in. Pour some of it in. Flip it. And then here I have the sauteed beef. Oh, with the fried egg. Mm. I'm so hungry. Oh my gosh. It's good. There's so much flavor. Spicy, but not too spicy. The peppers are nicely cooked. They're not too raw. Moving on, I'm going to try the Hunan Mi Shim. Super can. flavorful, too. Yo, I gotta try this egg one, though. All that flavor. Man, the, pep the green peppers are crucial to these dishes. This tastes like China. Yeah? All right. This, yeah. Cool. this tasted like China. We have you know, the funny thing is, I had never been to Silky Kitchen before, but today, let me tell you this, I will be back. Hi. All right, All right. what's up, Ni Hao? Roy. David, uh, are you from Shanghai, but yeah. your partner's from Yunnan. Yeah. And this food is mostly based in Yeah, Yunnan. mostly I based like a green line, yeah. All right, you guys, we are at South of the Clouds and we are about to Fenbei, the Yunnan Xian. Yeah, it's So she said that is how they do it in Yunnan, a hot ass pot, Andrew, contained in a wooden container. All right, David, you're looking at a silky chicken, AKA a black skin chicken. Yeah, now but the chicken just comes like this. Okay. So the tongue is completely different. Oh, this tongue is this tongue, but this little Andrew, we gotta first try this Yunnan Guo Chao Mian crossing bridge noodles. Then we're gonna get to the Xiao Guo. The little pot was cooked differently. It was only chicken broth, no pork broth, but pork pieces. They said it's gonna taste really different. Crossing, crossing bridge, bridge noodles, noodles. Yunnan Guo Chao Mian. It low key has a lot of spice to it, even though you can't see it. This is authentic. So authentic. I burned the shit out of my hand. This is the pork meat noodle, except still in chicken broth. Little, Little pot, pot noodles. noodles. Mm. Mm. Straight up, it tastes like Lao food. Yeah, it has kind of this sourness that's gonna give you that Southeast Asian vibe. And our last but not least, to wrap up our chicken feast, it's a Yunnan chicken pot. They said they served this to a US president when he oh, came to Yunnan. Oh, oh, there's this little hole in the pot that goes straight to the furnace. So there was a lot of heat getting into this pot through this hole here. Yo, man, scoop that, man. I wanna try it. Yunnan chicken pot. That chicken flavor is so deep. It's like chicken noodle soup times five. That touches the soul. Oh my goodness. Dave, I gotta say, that's gotta be one of the best chicken soups I've ever had in my entire life. It tastes like, there's there's like no other ingredients there. I can tell it's very little salt. She cooked me up something that was yeah, good for my soul. Yeah, cool. Mama's chicken soup, okay, could I have another okay. bowl? She worked late nights just to keep on the night lights. Gave me training wheels so I could stay on my bike. Last but not least, Andrew, we have a dish that's not from Yunnan but has some Yunnan touches on it. This is a Yunnan version of Huang Menji. Huang Menji originally from Jinan, Shandong. Shandong, obviously, that's where our mom is from. It looks like this version is a lot less saucy. It's a little bit more dry, but the potatoes are really well cooked. Huang Menji, yellow braised chicken, but the Yunnan version. Mm. 
I can definitely taste <clears throat> the Yunnan influence in how fragrant it is. It honestly tastes like half Dapanji and half Huangmenji, which is, I can't compare this to other Huangmenjis, but this is good. And overall, what was your favorite thing? And I gotta give it to the chicken soup here. Feel pretty torn because I liked everything, but I gotta actually give it to the guo chow mian, to the crossing bridge noodles. I that totally was see fire. why. Andrew, what constitutes public village as a hipster Chinese spot? Hipster Chinese spots, what they're doing essentially is I've studied Chinese culture and food, and I like this from this region, this from this region, and this from this region. I know how to make a good version of all of them, and I'm gonna serve it at one spot. This spot is open by the LGBT Chinese community. And that is right there, non-traditional. We're here with one of the owners, Kyo. How would you describe this menu? It's authentic uh, Chinese food with a little bit of a modern twist. So she made all the uh, chili oil from scratch, and then all the noodles are also homemade. Food is the the key to your soul. You want people to really understand you. It's like you know, probably when you describe it with words, you know, you probably will able to, you probably will mess it up, but you can't mess it up with food. All right, so David actually had a meeting to go to, so for the rest of this segment, it's gonna be me. Let me first of all start off with this traditional plum drink. I'm always interested to see how kind of new school hipster spots are gonna do a twist on their plum juice. Very authentic, I'm gonna tell you that. That is a traditional drink here. Here's their berry mojito. Got a little carbonation to it. Elderberry, delicious, very light, flowery. These are two dishes that you're really only gonna find at really, really Chinese spots. And this one, the Kao Lung Mian, I've only seen it in Beijing. This is the first restaurant in America that I've even seen serve it. This is a street food off of Beijing. Basically what they're doing is taking these long, flat, pasta-like noodles, they grill it with egg, and then they fold it up around cucumbers and sausage and whatever else you got, Kao Lung Mian. Because it has a lot of hot dogs and cheese. I would say that's predominantly what I'm tasting. Mm. My favorite part is just the noodle and the egg, actually. That's so good. Uh, this one looks a little bit cleaner, a little less messy, but it's still completely covered in flavor. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, we're doing a video on it. I love it. I want, I want to watch. All right, so we got chicken neck right here. I don't want to be weird and rave about the chicken neck. It's honestly really good. What I like about the chicken rack is like you can just kind of bite at it. This is one of the must-get dishes. It's unlike any other Chinese food I've ever had. Okay, here I got the wanza noodle. This is a dry noodle. It has like a lot of chickpeas, lots of vegetables. Oh, you got two types of noodles. Two tones right here. Okay, a little bit of soup at the bottom. Woo! This has that mala heat right here. All right, straight up, that is a tasty bowl of noodles. Man, I gotta take one more bite. Dude, honestly, David is missing out a lot right now. Finishing off the meal, we have Bing Fun. This is a Sichuan dessert, but it's usually topped with a whole bunch of different things like crushed peanuts, you have a little bit of flowers in there, you have hall flakes, which are made from the hawthorn berry, you have a few goji berries in there too. It's actually one of my favorite desserts. I don't even, like growing up, I didn't even like Chinese desserts, but that's because everything was just like red bean, but the Bing Fun came through, it's killed the game. Honestly, oh my God, that is so good. It's actually so good for cooling you down because the jelly is kind of thick and it kind of like soaks up all the spices as you eat it. Mm. All right, my favorite things here are absolutely the Jigu Jia and the Bing Fun. I think this right here, these two, if you just got this, this is a meal right here. And to be honest, man, I think everybody should check it out. Public Village, on to our next spot. All right, Andrew, we are in Greenwich Village, essentially the NYU University Street area. It only makes sense that former NYU students opened up a Yunnan Mishan spot. David, uh, I have a backpack on. I'm looking like a student. We're in front of a spot that was started by former international students. Let's go take a look. All right, you guys, this is rice noodle. It's a Yunnan Mishan spot, but I gotta say it's a little bit lower end. It's a lot cheaper than the other spots we've been going to. I feel like this is a student spot to me, and I'm not saying anything about the food because the food actually looks pretty good. It feels like a student run spot. So I got Pidan Tofu, which is a thousand year old egg and tofu. I gotta say, Andrew, so far so wow. good. They're packing the flavor. A little on the salty side, but actually overall very flavorful. Here I have the number one ordered item. This is the beef rice noodle with a fried egg and an extra drumstick. I got the soup right here. Let me pour this in. I got a, a tomato egg right here. I'm gonna be pouring it. Fast casual oh, rice noodles. noodles at the rice noodle on McDougal. Definitely tastes very homemade. Yeah, the flavors aren't too strong. I think it's easy to eat. But I have to say, the food is good. It's not complex and it's definitely not comparable to like 
you know me shin spots run by you know actual chefs but it totally gets the job done it reminds me a lot of china sure. last but not least andrew for 450 at the rice noodle they have a uh, osmanthus jelly not a bing fun i've got to say andrew that the rice noodle is maybe the most student feeling place we've eaten on this whole crazy food crawl aren't you guys we have arrived at our one of our last and final spots WT. WT was opened up by Chinese international students. It's sort of like the hottest new boutique boba shop in New York. And you know what I think is really cool is that it's on Thompson Street, which is really not an Asian street at all. But you see a lot of history here. There's like these dudes like playing chess right there the, and reading like the, I can, what I can only assume is Ernest Hemingway. David, they're far past that. Come on. They've read all those books. I don't know. Got some boba. Now across from WT, there might be another new boba tea spot here. So they do coffee meats, juice, fresh milk tea, cheese foam. This is definitely Asian owned. Now these people are doing a little bit of a different take. I can see that there's a non-Asian person working at the counter. Let's see who's behind all this. We do have boba, but that is not our specialty. The owners of the spot are Chinese? Yes. Okay. They actually have a mother company in China. We actually have a sister store. <laughs> That's on oh, they do Crop Circle. These are the you guys know Manny from Crop Circle, which is a spot that we we're at earlier. Actually, also has Coffee Meets Juice, which we're at right now. So, we guys, I know a lot about boba. This taro was just slightly cold, and it wasn't freezing cold. It gave me no rain freeze. Kudos to that. They got the temperatures on point. But the real test for the temperatures is the dragon fruit and the peach with the cheese foam, Andrew. Uh-huh. I think if they were able to... So you're saying cold enough to be cold, but not too cold to freeze you. All right, let's try this. WT. They did a real good job. I can see why WT has been shutting the game down lately. Really get the real dragon fruit flavor without it being too sweet. Wow, real grapefruit, lots of cheese foam. It's not too sweet. Overall, I like it, but I can't drink it too fast. Andrew, I've got to say I was impressed by WT. No cap. All right, Andrew, we have to go to the battle of the international student-owned boba chains because one is owned by economics majors, one is owned by engineering majors. I just made that up. So both of these boba shops actually are right across the street from each other. One's Mino, one's WT. I would say Mino does not focus so much on marketing that it has boba, although they do. They're more of a coffee and juice spot. Pineapple coffee. Goodness, the pineapple strong, the coffee strong. Got a brain freeze. I enjoy this a lot. I really like uh, the fruit coffee drinks. I know they came from Japan originally and kind of got popular all around Asia. So as far as the fruit slushy with cheese foam, I would say it goes to WT. Mino is offering some products that WT doesn't even have. Boba Wars on Thompson Street. Who would have thought? Who would have thought three years ago you'd say that? All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Please let us know in the comments section below. One, what are some other concepts you would like to see some international students open? Number two, what else you want us to cover? And number three, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Follow us on social media. And until next time, we're out. Peace. Yo, man, are you a fan of PG1, the rapper? Because I heard he's also from Dongbei. PG1, oh my god, he's my, he's my, oh, he's my favorite, yeah. <laughs> Yo, shout out to PG1, Rapper China. Yeah, respect. <laughs> <laughs>